Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We place in your hands this evening as we gather together. We thank you for all that you're doing in our life through your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your Holy Spirit upon us and especially the gift of love. Lord, we thank you for, uh, for enabling us to experience your Spirit in our lives and, as, and also to share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this wonderful opportunity to share your word. And I thank you for all those who have joined in and the desire to listen to the word again and again. And Lord, I'm sure that you'll reward each one of them. Uh, Lord, I pray for today's session. I pray that our eyes will open, our ears will open, that we might hear your voice, that we might experience the power of your word in our life, and that we might experience being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, without measure. And once again, I pray for all those who are joining in and all those who will be joining to the YouTube. Lord, fill everybody with the power of your spirit. Let them experience a mighty power upon their body, on the spirit, soul, in the families, in the working place and in the business too, Lord. And in the ministries, Lord. I, I pray for Manipur. I pray that peace will be restored in that state. And I pray that all the paths of darkness that has caused this situation will be bound in the holy name of Jesus. And I pray that once again, peace will be restored in the hearts of people. And I pray that uh, the administration will have compassion for each and every one. And I pray they may have wisdom also too for the restoration of Manipur. Uh, Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll all pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Cover us with the blood of your Son. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around us. Build a wall of fire around us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Let your angels encamp around us day and night. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. Teach us, teach us, and empower us. And empower us. us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we have been learning about the various titles of the Holy Spirit. And uh, these days we have been studying about this particular scripture in, in Timothy. 2, uh, two Timothy. Chapter 1, uh, verse 7. For God did not give us his, give us a spirit of fear. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. So you have, to make, you, have to, you have to come to a point where you have to believe and accept the reality that God has not given you the spirit of fear. So all the fears that are coming into your life, Three, coming into your mind, your two emotions, uh, to your thought pattern, uh, that, that feeling that comes. And, and, and sometimes you experience a fear standing around you. Now, these things understand that it is God has not sent these things. So God has given us the spirit of power. So understand that because God has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of fear will always try to fight, fight in us. So that we don't run the race that God has set before us in a full swing. So keep this in mind. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, a timidity, you know, but to be timid in doing God's will and God's purposes. So this thing we have to keep in mind. So we are learning about this, uh, this spirit of power. So as I was sharing yesterday that uh, uh, one thing that the spirit of power does is uh, it, it helps us to abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. In union with Christ. In union with the Father. This spirit of power. The Holy Spirit. Gives us that uh, power. To, uh, it's like a clue. you know. It's like a clue. No? It's like a clue. The power of God has various manifestations. It's like a clue. That because of the power. You are attached to God. And you are attached to Jesus Christ. You know, it will be a surprise for many people. I have noted many families that are keeping on going forward. 
even though husband is not pole and wife is south pole also they are able to go together is only because the power of god is holding that family and this is a reality where 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 husband and wife is opposing one another children children are on in a different plane and a different position so and all the confusion we know that happens in families it is it is is a reality that the power of god is holding this families it's a reality so many times many don't experience it but then as we learn to walk with god and when he reveals you can see this how the power of god is holding people here in the in the book of wisdom chapter 1 verse 7 Wisdom one seven. <clears throat> But wisdom one seven. <clears throat> Tell me, you who my soul? Oh, sorry, you song or song? May I know where you are reading? It's uh, Wisdom chapter one, verse seven. Yes, brother. Uh, because the spirit of the Lord has filled the world, and that which holds all things together knows what is said. Yeah, because the spirit of the Lord has filled the world, and that which holds all things together, and that which hold all things together. This there is a power. of god that holds all things together so same way the bro families that are in in a very bad state you know they are kept together communities you know communities whether they belong to priests or sisters or uh, prayer groups and you know, so many areas you know the power of god is holding together mm -hmm. so that is what that there is an unseen work of god here in the letter to the hebrews it is an unseen work and many 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 may have not even recognized it but the lord has shown me very clearly regarding one family i really literally is uh, tangibly felt that like a glue the power of god is holding them together hebrews chapter 1 chapter 1 verses Verses three. Three. Okay. He is the reflection of God's glory, and the exact imprint of God's very being, and He sustains all things by His powerful word. Word. So all things are sustained, and in the footnote is mentioned, bears along. Mm -hmm. Bears along. along. So the, the so there is a, there is a power which is holding on to the world. Now, for example, there there is one science. I forgot the name of that science. It is called. Uh, I just don't remember right now. Tomorrow I will tell that name. That according, according to the teaching of that particular science, there is some power that is holding on. And that is accepting Jesus as the Lord, all, including ourselves. And accepting that he is the Son of God. Victoria, can you go uh, uh, mute that galaxy? Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, so, so according to that particular science, or uh, everything is like dust. So the Holy Spirit, uh, the power of God, the power of God's word is holding all this together. Or, or else everything will become dust, you know. So that that's what you have to understand. And you know, and I was really surprised when I in in two Timothy chapter one verse seven, I have read this word many times. The spirit of power. I I used to think this uh, the word power can be might, or can be strength and all. But actually, uh, yesterday I just looked into that uh, Greek uh, concordance. It's available on the Google Play Store also. It's very it's an uh, it's an app. Esod. 
So I now, before it was free, now they're charging 200 or 270 rupees, I think. Uh, lifetime. So in that, you, you can just stay, you can you can go to any scripture and they have, they have numbered all the words and you just click there, you can know what is the uh, Greek word used. And I, I was really surprised when I saw this, uh, the spirit of power, that word power is dunamis. So the same word in Acts chapter 1 verse 7, you shall see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That power is also the word dunamis. So the Bible is telling us, the Holy Spirit is telling us that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the dunamis. Now what is the dunamis? It's, it's like it's a Greek word for dynamite. It's a, it's a Greek word for a powerful, mighty power. So that is what, that's what Bible says about the apostles. They change the world upside down, you know. They change the world upside down. So that kind of power was promised by Jesus to all the believers. And they, told, they were told, you shall say power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And it is the same dynamis that is mentioned here. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, you have not received the spirit of fear, but you have received the spirit of power. That is dynamis. And you know, it's, they say it's like a dynamo. Now we all know that generators and dynamo have to be switched on. Of course, there are now automatic generators are there also. But there also, there will be something that is, uh, uh, that, will, that will ignite the generator. So when you switch on the generator, the power is formed. In the same way, when you when you when you ignite a, a dynamite, it explodes. So you know the, the power of God within us has to be ignited every day. So many of you may be thinking, "Oh, it's written like this," but I I don't think it's for me. I I have never felt a power. I have never felt. You might stay like that because many many of us might have not experienced it tangibly. But the Bible says that we have been given. The spirit of power to keep us in Christ, to keep us in the purposes of God, to keep us in the will of God. You know, there, there is a stream that is flowing that is opposing the will of God. And if this uh, uh, this power will not glue us, you know, to the will of God, we, we will be swept away. I have no doubt about it. If we are able, if we are able to stand today, it's because of this gluing power of God, that, that dynamic power of God that keeps holding us in the will of God, in the purpose of God, and with intimacy with God. We know the Bible tells that God is spirit. God is spirit. And we know that we are also a spirit. So this spirit and that spirit, how, how does it come to an intimacy? Without the power of the Holy Spirit, without, without the, um, the spirit of power, we cannot get glued to God. So we, what we have to realize is that there is something that we need to do daily that will ignite the power within us. So always understand if we are kept today, if we are kept today, it's only because of the abiding power of God working in each one of us. Because the force that is opposing that uh, the stream that is flowing against us is very strong and very powerful. You might have seen in the time of flood, people hold on to certain things, you know. Maybe a tree, maybe a railing, maybe a pillar. And we are also holding on through our personal prayer, uh, through our quiet time with God, uh, we, are, we are also holding on, uh, holding on uh, with the purposes and the will of God. So understand that this, uh, this spirit, there is something called spirit of power. So many, many were not ready to listen to this because they tell, oh, I do not have a ministry and these are all for ministry purposes. But actually it is not only for the ministry purposes, but being a basic believer, for being a faithful, you have the spirit of power inside you to help you, to help you powerfully. And there is one scripture here. Now, sometimes there is a confusion. People might tell that I do not have the power. We all have the spirit of power. But the measure may be less. Now, does the Bible say anywhere that the power can be less in, in one person and more in another person? The Bible says so. We'll see in uh, 
book of revelation book of revelation uh, chapter 3 verse 8 revelation 3 Right, right. I know works. Look, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you are little power and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power. And yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Even though they had little power, they kept the word. What is the kept the word? How do you keep the word? Hmm. By believing and obeying. By believing and obeying, we keep the word. By believing and obeying, we keep the word. I know that you have but little power and yet you have kept my word. You know, when, when you all go to heaven, there will be a lot of word in our hands, you know. The words that we believed and the words that we obeyed in, in season and out of season, those words will be with us. Yet you have kept my word. And have not denied my name. So even though they had little power, they were able to obey the word of God, keep the word of God, and they did not deny the name of the Lord. That means there were powerful persecution. In the midst of persecution, they did not deny Jesus. So now for many of us, we will see this is, there are a lot of thought patterns that comes. Oh, I am not that powerful. I do not have that much power. And all these things we all think, you know. But whatever power has been given to us, it is, it, it is available for us for this day and it is also available for us to overcome all the power of the enemy in our life today. So where it is lacking? Where, where can it be that it is lacking? It is not spending time with the Lord. A quality time with the Lord. I have seen a lot of housewives, you know, powerful, no ministry, taking care of the children, taking care of the children, taking care of the husband, but very powerful. They get up and pray in the morning, children go to school, again they pray, again they pray in the evening, again they pray at night. They do not have any ministry. The only ministry God has given to them is their family. They are very powerful. They are able to overcome every situation in their life with, with joy and strength. Husband may be alcoholic. Husband may be going through financial trouble. How, uh, husband's family may be troubling them. Neighbors may be troubling them. Children may not be may not be that obedient at times. All this they face, you know, and they but they remain strong because they are able to tap into the power of God. I, I don't like to use the word tap in, but I am using it. When normally in the secular world, they, they say they're tapping uh, to tap. They, what, what, what actually you're meaning is to get connected to the power of God. So, um, uh, why, why we are lacking, we are not experiencing it tangibly, is because we don't take time to pray and we do not take time to return back to the Lord again in prayer. Now, for many of you all who are working, you might put up a question how can we pray from, we have a duty from 7 to 6? or 9 to 8, and all those things, you know. Even those times also, when you get a break time, if you can just sit down, uh, take the Bible, if it's in the mobile, it's fine. You, you read some of the scriptures, read one or two chapters. Just if you want to do this, just think about the Lord and do That's getting back to the Lord. That is getting back to the Lord. So that repeatedly coming back to the Lord is one of the important key to keep this uh, dynamo functioning in our life. Then you learn to abide in the Lord. Abiding itself reaches the power. Do you think it is easy to love everybody when people don't like you? It's only possible by the spirit of power. As we learn to flow with the Holy Spirit, as we learn to follow His fellowship, 
walk after him and we we that the power will help us it will it will grow us and to walk in love so that is something we have to remember here in uh, ephesians this scripture we have read many times but the last portion we had not uh, concentrated upon that is uh, ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 18 and 19 this we have read many times so what what we have to remember uh, these things are not for those who are in the ministry for each person all those who believe in jesus christ will receive water baptism and those who are going to receive water baptism it is for each one of us there may not be a known ministry there may not be any ministry what god has given to us that we need to take care of ah uh, yeah verses 1 uh, to uh, verses 117 this 17 and 18 many times you have spoken just read it out 17 18 and 19 you can read i pray that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you and revelation as you go to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the to which he has called you what are the riches of his glory among the saints and what the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the word of his great power i do uh, yeah i i pray that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him this we have read many times as you grow in intimacy with the lord the spirit of wisdom and revelation will start functioning in you so as it start functioning what will happen so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened so when the spirit of wisdom as you grow in intimacy of knowing him uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will function in you and then what will happen the your the, the your eyes of your heart will be enlightened and then uh, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you so you come to know the hope to which he has called you what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints so you will know the hope to which he has called you and you will know the riches of the glorious inheritance that you are to receive if you ask me how many persons might have how many christians in this generation might have come to realize this i i would say very few only i cannot tell percentage the putting percentage may, may be judging you know so i cannot say but very few only very few only are that who have really uh, come to know the hope of their calling and the inheritance they had to receive with the saints and that is because of not growing in intimacy as you grow in intimacy with the holy spirit with god they you will get the spirit of wisdom and revelation so verses 19 and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power so god's power is immeasurable bible calls it uh, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power so god's power is immeasurable and great for whom for us who believe for us who believe so when you start praying you know see when i say prayer i, I include all the, when i when i'm saying that you need to pray i don't mean that you should only ask when i say a prayer it includes bible reading praise and worship um, thanking god being sorry for your sins praying for others praying for yourself so you, how, how how do we know this power when we go for a retreat we can experience it but it it need not end there you know when you return back home when you start praying you can experience it in a day to day life and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe for us this immeasurable greatness the, the great power of god is for us for each one of us and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power so for each one of us the working of his great power for each one of us so it doesn't matter what background we belong to this great power is is supposed to work in each 
one of us. And I, I don't think that uh, all of us will have a platform to preach the word of God to 10,000. I don't think. Maybe we may not get an opportunity might even to say to 10 people also may not be there. Maybe to 5 people also may not be there. But then to be a witness, you know, to be, to be a witness as a housewife, as a husband, you know, God's power can work in us. But th that will happen only when we really take time to pray. Take time to pray and return back to again to the prayer when the Holy Spirit leads us or whenever we are free. So that is how we build ourselves. I remember a friend of mine was working in Bangalore, very handsome guy, and he was very, very, very tall, had a very good job. I don't remember the company name. Those days it was a very big IT company. He was staying in uh, uh, Bangalore. He was staying in that. Uh, some garden is that Urpi Garden or something? One place near BTM layout. Wilson Garden. Ah, Wilson. No, 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 not Wilson Garden. B BTM layout. Uh, BTM layout, uh, one place. I've forgotten. BTM layout only, one place. I have stayed with him a few days, you know. And one thing really surprised me was this. He used to go for to work, you know, and that is the place. What garden? I don't remember exactly. Urpi Garden, I think. I don't know, Brother Joe will be knowing better. I don't know one garden they call it. Uh, Wilson Garden is another place. And, and, and that is a point where all youngsters meet. All boys and girls come. Plenty of restaurants there. And they uh, after the work is over, they all, all in the evenings you can find them uh, all over the place. And that is where he was staying. And what surprised me was this. After he comes back from his uh, work, he will have something and all. And he will spend time in prayer. Spend, spend time in and he, he used to build himself up like this. If the duty will change, according to that, he will pray. And he, he's a young boy. He has money. He looks good. He can also go around, beat him, lay out, and spend time there. But then he made a choice to spend time with the Lord. And what about Saturday and Sunday? Saturday and Sunday, he used to go to RRC. Renewal Retreat Center. He used to, Saturday and Sunday, he would go to the, the renewal center. He used to go there. So what I am trying to tell you is, no matter what background we belong to, if you have a desire for God, and if you take time to pray, you will experience the spirit of power that has been given to you. Maybe in a little measure, but that measure is enough for you today to walk with God. That measure is enough today to overcome all the power of the enemy in your life. That measure is enough to call upon the Lord. That measure is enough to read the word of God. That measure is enough to be a witness for Christ. That is enough and more than enough. That is why we have to, if you really want to activate the spirit of power in your life, you need to spend time with the Lord's twenty. God put this power to work in Christ. Which power? The same power that works in us. The same power God put this power to work in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. So Jesus rose from the dead and he was taken up and seated at the right hand of the father. The same power is also given to each one of us. That is why Bible calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of power. You cannot separate the Holy Spirit from power. People people have to do that, you know. Because they always want to be comfortable, uh, being comfortable zone. They keep saying that uh, I want, I, I have the Holy Spirit. I, I don't know, I don't want the power of God. So without the power of God, we cannot be united with Christ. So that is something that we have to remove. Any, anybody got any questions here? And the second thing, after prayer, the important thing is that in our day-to-day -day life, as you walk around, move around, as we are on our duties, we need to learn to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit inside us.
we, we have to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit inside us. So for that number one, you have to be acclimatized to the voice of God. You need to know what is the particular way that he speaks to you. So we need to be sensitive in that area, you know. So that we, so that as, as after we finish praying in the morning, we go for mass and then we pray. And after we finish prayer, we come out of prayer time, move into our duties. And we need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying within us. And this is very important and very key in order to continue to grow in the Spirit and to grow in the Lord. And to know the Spirit of power in our life. So we have to be sensitive to his voice. So now, how does the Holy Spirit um, bring you to an attention that he's going to speak to you? Sometimes he can surprise you by without, without a forewarning or without a signaling, he can talk to you. That also can happen. But other than that, there are certain ways by which the Holy Spirit will take a step forward by which you can come to know that there's something that uh, you are going to hear from the Lord. Can anybody share what it can be? Hello. Can any, any anybody share? Anybody share what can how the Holy Spirit brings our attention before he speaks. As I told you earlier, he can speak even without bringing our attention. Because he is the sovereign God, he can do that. But there are times he will, there, is, there may be reason, there may be reason also, maybe you are, you are, you are active in something. So, he, 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 like for example, how does a child attract, attract the parents? Either they'll start crying, or they'll come to you and start uh, pulling your dress. Or they will be telling something by which you know that uh, they, they are telling something. You need, you need to, uh, you, you, should, you should attend to the child or, or, or have attention to what the child is telling. So that is how a child attracts uh, the parents, you know, when the child wants to tell something or want the parents to do something. You know, the child has various ways by which they... So in the same way, the Holy Spirit will always give us a, what you call, he will take a step forward and then he will prepare us, you know. Prepare us to hear what he is going to tell. Can you tell anybody, can you say, and you can share any of your experience. Jeremiah, you are here. You can also share. Anyone can share. See, he will. He will always. He will. He will just very cool. Very, he will just. You no, know, he will make us know that he is going to speak. Especially those who have an intimacy with him, and those who spend some time in prayer and return back to the prayer time. You no, know, for them, he, he will surely do. Anybody can share. Number number one is that uh, you will feel a peace that surpasses understanding. You feel one peace. There no, there's no reason behind that, but you feel a peace. So what we have to do, we need to be attentive when we feel that peace. We need to be attentive uh, while when you feel that peace. So if uh, just we have to think inwardly, you have to just think inwardly. Uh, trying to hear what he is telling. And second is, you will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. For no reason, if you are doing something, you are not praying, you are not you are doing some work at home or at any place, and suddenly you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. What you have to do is to look inside you, look inside you. Make, 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 make yourself attentive inside. You may be doing something, you can continue doing, but you need to be attentive and what he's trying to tell. I remember a friend of mine, he was sharing this. 
I, I think Shantosh, Shantosh uh, Karimatara, uh, those from Kerala, they know him. And he was saying that one day he was walking on the road and he felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he said he just stopped in that place and just closed his eyes. And then he heard something. And what he heard, I like to share to you all. It's very interesting. You know, he heard something and he saw. And the Lord told, when you thank me, bondages break. So what the Lord showed him was actually mud pots. They were all hanging like this. And when he was thanking the Lord, the pots were all break, one by one, one by one, breaking away. So this revelation came on the road, you know. Where did it come? On the road. So, this, so we have to understand, yes, God's Spirit can speak to us at any place. Where did God speak to Moses? Did he, did he speak to Moses in his prayer time? The wilderness, taking care of yeah. the sheep. Mm. Yeah. But he was attentive. The Bible says, beautiful, I like that verse. So many years I have read this and many times I have read it Exodus. Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus 3. 2 and, two and 3. 2, 3 and 4. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. He said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and the bush is not burnt up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at, at this great sight and see why the bush is not burnt up. So he was traveling with all the sheep and all, and he saw one uh, bush is burning, and the bush was not getting burnt out. And the Bible says, and Moses said, what did he say? I must turn aside and look at this great sight. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out Moses, Moses. Now just imagine if uh, Prophet Moses would have seen the flame fire burning and he might have thought it's some another wildfire and he would have moved away. He would have missed the visitation that of God at that day. And the Bible tells us when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, when the Lord saw when the Lord saw that he had set aside to see, that is the time God said, Moses, Moses. If Moses would have been cold and he would have said, oh, a lot of fires I see, it may be something like that, and he would have gone away, he would have missed the visitation that day. You know, there are a lot of visitations from God that comes to us. And I remember when Jesus was going on the Passion, on the way, he was. He told the woman, woman of Jerusalem, that you have missed the visitation of the Lord. So many times, you know, the Lord uh, brings us to His attention, and somehow we we say, "Oh, I'm busy," and we miss the visitation of the Lord. And that is the reason why we can we do not continue to know the spirit of power in our life. So the sun, the peace will come, the presence, you'll feel a presence. And those times, we need to be attentive. If, if you have got nothing else to do, you can just simply sit down also. You can simply close your eyes, just sit down, and just wait to hear a few minutes, wait to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling
So I just read out some. Any, any, anybody got any questions? We'll pray. We are we, we have ran out of time. There are a few messages that girl had sent when the last season was going on. The last few uh, YouTube videos she was not able to see due to some reason. So while watching, uh, she has given some messages. The Lord is leading a per, uh, healing a person of uterus cancer. And the Lord is uprooting a black tree out of a person's life. And the Lord is healing two persons with skin infection on their hands. A lady is crying over her past sins. Lord is comforting her. And the Lord is saying that many people in the group will, will get into a prophetic frenzy. Will get into a prophetic frenzy. I sense on the Holy Spirit to tell you all that you all and we need to pray asking the Holy Spirit to make us more sensitive to His voice. So let's all pray together. Everybody open your mouth and say together Holy Spirit. Hello. Everybody unmute. Especially those who are in the house and we'll all say together Holy Spirit. Help me to be sensitive to your voice. Help me to be sensitive to your voice. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This kind of prayer, you know, it should come out inside you. You need to get that inside you. Somebody has to close their mic. So um, uh, this is a prayer that you need to think and you can need to pray inside you. They're asking the Holy Spirit to make you more sensitive to know his voice. We'll continue tomorrow. So we'll pray for some time. Everybody open your mouth. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for the spirit of power in our life, Lord. We thank you that you have not given us the spirit of fear. God, I thank you, Lord, that you have not given us the spirit of timidity. Lord. These are the things that we have written. And we reject them in the name of Jesus. We reject all kinds of fears in us. Fears of sickness, sir. Fears, fears of being let down, fears of slander and gossip, fears of powers of darkness. We reject these things in Jesus' name. The fear of what others will say, fear of what others will do, and all this kind of fear leave us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody open your mouth and praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powerful power of God, let it manifest in us, Lord. Let the ultimate anointing immeasurable power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let every measurable power of God because of the anointing, because of the power of God. Every every you be broken. Let every you be broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory, 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 Lord. Shikabala, <laughs> 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 
so after we finish those who have been touched by the lord keep thanking the lord keep thanking the lord anybody want to share anything Lord is releasing a mantle of thanksgiving. He is driving out some kind of self-doubt, some kind of fears and all is driving out from our life. He is driving out some kind of sadness which has come since very long time. Since very long time, some sadness. That has come since very long time. And there's another message I missed it. Uh, the Lord is preparing a person for an entrance exam. Okay, so God bless each one of you all. Keep growing in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We'll meet tomorrow again as God wills. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, keep thanking the Thank Lord. You. Keep thanking the Lord.